Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisu da'eefu, miskeen, uzal, wa jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah from this way of marifa and this way towards the ishq and love of Allah which manifests in the following of the way of Sayyidina Muhammad that this is a immense reality of love. And the fifth of Rabbi Thani is the Ursa Mubarak of Sayyidina Jalaluddin al-Rumi Qaddisallahu Siru the third of Sayyidatina Fatima Thizari salam on the third of Jumat Thani, very very blessed month. Say so the tenth is Sayyidina Baba Samasi Qaddisallahu Siru from the Nashbandi Shajara, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq on the 22nd Rabbi Thani and the holy birth of Sayyidatina Fatima Thizari salam on the 20th of Rabbi Thani, Jumat Thani inshaAllah. So immense blessings in this holy month and from the knowledge of awliyaullah this is the month of Qamar and in the realities that it holds from the secret of 59, 54 and the 54th surah of Holy Qur'an which is Qamar and the way and the reality of Shamsi wal Qamar in which Allah is continuously giving us signs upon the horizon and then signs within ourselves. The signs upon the horizon are much easier to understand than the horizon than the signs within ourselves because the self is so preoccupied in dunya and so distracted in dunya that Allah sends the signs of perfection upon the horizon and that Allah is directing us continuously through Holy Qur'an, shamsi wal qamar, shamsi wal qamar, continuously mentioning the sun and the moon and shams always mentioned first and the reality that we've talked many times is that the sun represents eternity and it takes the premier position and that that which is eternal it is the reality of a star and that it carries no mass. And As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amar is then the reality of the, the planet and, and mass in our life within this world of mass and form and describes that how the nature of our reality look to the skies and you see the reality of guidance. Because people want to debate and argue that there's no need to guide, there's no need to be guided that you can follow your own path and that's not correct. Because that's like a shooting star that's just going somewhere, we don't know where it's going. But true guidance and the system of Allah's guidance is shown through the sun and the moon. And as a result of that guidance the inhabitants of earth have a very tranquil life. Imagine that if the sun took its own orbit and decided that it wanted to come closer or farther means everything is on a very precise course. And Allah described like an orbit because these are like fuluks and ships that are moving a course. And had the sun decided one day it wants to come a little bit closer, inhabitants of earth would be burned. 
And it decided another day, I want to go a little bit farther, then the inhabitants of earth would be frozen. And we see that the, the power of the moon upon the earth and what they call lunation. When the, the energy of the moon comes close to the earth it can raise the tides of the ocean. The tajalli of the moon when it sends its light upon the earth make people and inhabitants of earth to become what they call lunatic because they can't handle and carry the energy that being transmitted and reflected from the moon upon the inhabitants of the earth. And many realities that we always talk about that all vegetation and everything that we eat is a result of moonlight. The moon is sending a light and these vegetations are being raised. The sun enters in and sweetens the vegetation, the fruits and the crops, means there's a tremendous reality that Allah shows upon the horizon because Allah wants His creation to be known. You don't simplify just by saying, it's in Allah's hands, that's not your business. No, Allah this is a disrespect to the Divinely Presence that I put this there not as a game, not as a gesture, not as playing. But that you would see my signs and again this is the subject that been continuously talked about. These circles of zikr and these ways of tariqah are known as the way of tafakkirun. So when Allah says, oh Shaykh please tell us in Qur'an where is this mentioned? It's mentioned throughout Qur'an but you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. When Allah is describing none will know. Except my people of tafakkur. Everything is praising, everything is yusabbihu wa bahamdi, but none will hear it. So it means that the, the norm of creation will never understand these realities, nor will they accept it, nor will they acknowledge it. Because Allah has already set the guideline. That everything is praising me but none will hear it but except the exceptional. Because when Allah is saying except means He's drawing now a class and a category of creation whom they are exceptional. And these are people whom are the tafakkur. The people of tafakkur they can hear the praise an edge to their darajat upon what Allah gives to them. They hear the praise of the rocks, the stones, the birds, the creatures, whatever Allah wants them to hear because Allah is saying, none can hear it except the people of tafakkur. Means in this category of tafakkirun whom their Allah is continuously making reference to these except what we would call exceptional people, it's exceptional souls whom Allah has destined them to be trained. This way of zikr, this way of muraqabah and contemplation is an entire science that sit, meditate, do all the far, do everything that Allah made mandatory but your reward is not in that. That you do because Allah ordered you to do it. But those whom sit out of their love that they did what was mandatory and they do continuously much more than what is mandatory but they have an ishq and love. And as a result of their love and muhabbat they continuously strive to do more. They sit and they want to understand their character, they want to understand the badness within themselves. They're not interested in pointing out the badness to people, they want to know the badness within themselves. This is now the first sign of the people of tafakkur. So when you go to the masjid and the person wants to tell you where your feet are standing, he is not from people of tafakkur because that's not the character to worry about where somebody else is standing. You have to tremble at where you're standing 
What are your feet doing? Where are they taking you? Who do you think that you're fooling? So the one whom is tafakkirun and the beginning of their characteristics is they have fear of Allah for their grave, themselves and their reality. And they begin to apply that onto everything they do. What are then Allah described? The beginning of Qur'an is, is what? Because for tafakkirun the Qur'an is their guidance and is a dress and a, a pulling of light upon them that pulls them into their reality. Means alif la mim dhalik al kitab illa riba fi. So there's a secret in this alif la mim and that verily this book there's no crookedness. Wahudan al mutaqeen. And it's a guidance for mutaqeen. Other people say, no we're guided by Qur'an. Yes, that's not the level in which Allah is talking about. That's furqan, they're understanding right and wrong and debating right and wrong and bad character and, and you know this punishment, that punishment. But khudan al mutaqeen is something different. It's a guidance from Allah in which they trained with awliya to be mutaqeen that their senses and all five senses have to come under discipline. They have to have a discipline for their hearing, they have to have a discipline for their seeing, they have to have a discipline for their breathing, they have to have a, a discipline for their hawas and their desires. They have to have a discipline for their, their taste and all their, their breath, their entire reality. As a result Allah inspires these servants who are tafakkirun and make a tafakkur and contemplation, they're enrolled in an entire academy of these realities. It's not just every day anywhere you go and these categories are going to be dressing people. Because they give these titles cheaply to people. Someone somewhere in Islamic center says, we're all that, we're all these people, we're all tafakkirun as soon as you sit for two seconds and recite Qur'an. No, 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 this is an entire academy of realities. When Allah is negating and saying, none, none know it. Already now 98%, 99% of society has now been ruled out by Allah except, except exceptional whom Allah is going to grant a gift of guidance and put within their heart, stop and slow down. And that's why when you read all the stories of the Prophets and Messengers coming to people and warning about azab of Allah And you know the, the character of people was, well bring it on, bring it. If what you say is true let it to happen. And you read with astonishment that what kind of people like that? To talk to the messengers of Allah and say, no bring it. That they, they hasten and they rush to their own destruction. And you see that characteristic in dunya 100% now, 99.99% is that everyone wants to quickly destroy themselves 100 miles an hour into the grave as if they, they can't make it even faster with everything they choose and everything they want to do and all the difficulties upon this earth. And Allah's rahmah and immense mercy if he inspires the servants, slow down, slow down you're, you're, you're missing everything, you're going too fast. We described again in, in the month of Surat Al-Kahf and the power of 18, the second lunar month that Sayyidina Musa wanted in knowledge 
and Allah sent him to just one of my servants who, who had the characteristics of what? He attained a rahmah and then we taught him ilma laduni. Now everybody want to go get knowledge and hope they'll be merciful. It doesn't work that way, as soon as they get a knowledge they have no taskia, no cleaning and they become harsh and angry, belligerent and violent. But Allah's servants they're described differently, they attained a rahmah. They were trained to reach to a mercy and rahmah. Allah's greatest rahmah is Sayyidina Muhammad means that they attain the presence in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that the ruhani in the presence of the ruhani of Nabi And as a result that rahmah dresses them, that rahmah trains them in tarbiyah and, and khuluq in which Allah gives the, the magnificent khuluqul adheem, you're of a magnificent character. Because this character never expires and the reality of Prophet is Hayyu al Qayyum, is eternal, is da'im. And as a result these awliyaullah achieve these realities, they're trained under the tarbiyah of this reality to perfect their character, perfect their khuluq, protect, perfect their hearing, their seeing, their breathing, their sense of touch their qadam and the feet and the path in which they move. And as a result there is a continuous discipline and that they have a taqwa upon all their senses. And we described that before many times that if you take yourself everywhere and you're capable of hearing everything and you don't try to isolate yourself from creation, khalq, you're not going to have good khuluq. If you're one who keeps yourself amongst creation all the time there's no way to have good character because they're all backbiting, all bad talking, every type of gossip. How are you going to reach a taqwa within your hearing? That's why then they accompany awliya and Allah begin to train them, isolate yourself. At Asr time go home, sit and meditate, isolate. Don't have to be the one at every occasion and every location and every event, keep yourself more hidden. Your ears can never reach a purity and taqwa. If they're continuously bombarded by people's gossips and talks and everything that you have to hear, every music and every sound that the person wants to listen to and every va bad vibration and bad sound is all meant to destroy the taqwa of their hearing. So how these people think, oh they're mutaqeen because they gave themselves a title. No but awliya will sit with awliya and they'll explain what these titles are. That for a servant to be mutaqeen Allah gave them a certificate and taqwa on their hearing. And as a result of the cleanliness of their hearing and in the training of their hearing they begin to hear their consciousness. They hear what the soul is being inspiring for them. That Allah never leaves the servant alone. When Allah says, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein, your own consciousness that's in Divinely Presence is closer to you than your throat, your jugular vein. But do you have ears to hear Him? So people want to say they use that verse, oh Allah's closer to you, you don't need guidance and they use that as their dalil. No actually you got it all wrong, Allah's so close to you you're going to be punished why you can't hear Him. Because he didn't say, I'm far from you, he said, I'm right here, why you don't hear me? Mutaqeen can, when they train they cut everything out and they're trained to clean their ears. 
they're trained to isolate, they're trained to clean their heart and not even stop hearing the outside but they start to fight not to hear even the whispering. Because once you, you rid yourself of physical devils who continuously want to contaminate your ears, well that means that you're now prepared for battle, you've merely only began to sharpen your sword. Because the true battle is now when you sit and isolate yourself from the waswas trying to come into your ears. And for every unseen devil that enters into your premises and your environment that continuously wants to whisper within your ears to affect your heart, to affect your mind and your gossip. You sit and then they begin to talk to you, you come out angry at people. You think it's from Allah? No, this is from shaitan. So then they have to go again deeper in their fight and this is Jihad al-Akbar in which Prophet described that the inner fight is the true struggle. Then they're trained with their wazifas and recitations and all that Allah puts upon them of realities, now fight against that inner energy that's coming to corrupt you. And then what Allah taqullah, again because you're trying to have taqwa, wa kunu ma sadaqeen. Keep the company of truthful servants. Is that Allah only talking about physical or Allah doesn't care about physical? But Allah is training for us that, where's your keeping the sadiqeen? Allah cares for the spiritual. So you must have had a way and been trained to keep the company of truthful servants whom their light is free. Don't deem them to be dead, they're very much alive. The arwa is alive. And when Allah says, if you have a taqwa and you're trained on closing your eyes, you don't need to see this dunya, closing the ears and all the whisperings that are coming, then they start to train in the world of malakut, how to keep the company of the of the righteous servants of Allah And that is the reality of salah, means if you slow down your life and, and begin to understand that even the words you say in salah is all from this reality of muttaqeen, as salaamu alaykum ayyuhan nabi. While you're still in tahiyyat you have not closed. You have not closed the salah, you're saying, As salaamu alaykum ayyuhan nabi wasallam. means he's in front of you. Why you don't see Prophet wasallam and the arwa and the light of Prophet wasallam right in front of you? Wa salaamu alaykum ibadillahi salihin they're all in front of you. Allah making your salah, give them salams. Tashahud and give your shahada to Prophet so that he bears witness that you accept the oneness of Allah and the Risalat of Sayyidina Muhammad It's all there but they're not reaching to be mutaqeen and they're going too fast in this world to ever even understand tafakkirun and tafakkur. So then these associations is the way of tafakkur and contemplation. That Allah is destined and they're so slow down, you're going too fast into your grave and into the abode of punishment. As a result of slowing their life then Allah began to guide them, that accompany those. When you don't know something in life ask the people of dhikrullah. Ask the people of dhikrullah and who are the people of dhikrullah? The same people in which Prophet described, if you ever see their circles of paradise don't leave it, eat and drink a lot from it. 
Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, what are the circles and halaqahs of paradise? These are the circles of zikr in which they sit and they're praising upon Allah And one of the greatest praisings upon Allah is Salli Ala Nabi because this is the zikr of Allah in which Allah is describing, in Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi That's the zikr of Allah And when we want to make the true zikr of Allah Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad is that we mentioned Allah and that Allah will pray and praise upon this reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Means and it's the circles of dhikrullah and the shaykhs of that reality that they train the people for tafakkur. And in their schools of tafakkur and contemplation they teach them to slow down, begin to meditate and contemplate so that you can feel and hear the signs that Allah wants, you have to wash your hearing. If you're moving fast how are you going to wash your hearing? You isolate and as soon as you isolate you begin to see, oh my gosh this is amazing. When I don't have to hear people I can at least begin to hear some clarity and the cloud leaves my mind. And they begin to purify their hearing because they can now hear themselves and they can talk to themselves. And once they start to realize they're cleaning their hearing, they begin to understand now negative thoughts and negative energies are attacking them and that's when the shaykhs are saying, now do your wazifa, now do your awrad, make sure you're continuously in wudu. Now understand how to keep the company of sadiqeen, ukuluma sadiqeen, how to keep their company continuously in the world of light, how to reach out towards their madad and support. That Allah's servants are all around and that we must keep their company. Only at that time they begin to understand and then they isolate a little bit more and then they begin to close their eyes often. And they know that when they close their eyes, Ya Rabbi is like my qabr, that it's just going to be me and my amal. And I don't need the distraction of what my eyes saw and what my eyes convinced me was of any importance. And in the end when you really close my eyes and take my life from this dunya, I have no choice to open them anymore, I'll be faced with my actions and my deeds. Are they good enough to take in the grave with you? Because there's going to be a companion with everyone who goes into the grave, either he's going to be a good companion that continuously dresses him and blesses him or he's going to be a bad companion who enters in to disturb and destroy him. And these are the actions of insan. As soon as they meditate and contemplate they realize what they've done wrong. They realize that what their eyes focused on were not important. And when they close their eyes they're able now to begin to clean their vision, clean their heart, clean themselves of the distractions of hayat dunya and as a result Allah begin to cleanse their eyes. And if Allah begin to cleanse their eyes and when their eyes are closed they begin to see what Allah wants them to see in the reflection of their heart not their head. Now there's scientists that come out and said, actually you know these spiritual people that talked about the importance of a heart and that God's base is in the heart, now science came and actually said they're astonished. There's actual cells within the heart of human beings that have the same cellular structure like a brain cell and that they're capable of thinking and that these cells think. And that people actually have a heart and a brain within their heart. But they're too, too busy trying to use the outer brain which Allah and dhikrullah is, La ilaha illallah, don't use that head except for your dunya. 
And the real thing to use, the real brain is the brain within the heart, the heart, the energy, the light and the reality of light that enters into the heart Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah, not the maqs and the brain. And as soon as they begin to meditate and contemplate and close their eyes Allah begin to open the vision of their heart. And as a result they become Ahlul Basira, Mushahida because with all these practices they became Salihin. And result of their tariqah Allah begin to dress them this Salihin that they have to enter into the station of shuhada. And Prophet described Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, you want to look at somebody who died before he died, mawt qabl al mawt. And Nashbandiyat al Aliyah is based on the reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salam that reached to this reality of mawt qabl al mawt and trains and inspires the students to come this way that Prophet poured these knowledges into my soul to guide people back to this ishq and muhabbat of Allah and the ishq and the muhabbat and love of Sayyidina Muhammad And they begin to cleanse their eyes and Allah opens their eyes, the real eyes. If you shut the eyes from dunya, Allah opens the eyes into akhirah. And this hadith al-Qudsi that my servant approaches and does all their fard, approaches with voluntary worshipness means they begin to do acts of muhabbat and love. So much so that I become the hearing in which they hear, the seeing in which they see the breath in which they breathe, the hands in which they touch, the feet in which they move. So much so they become Rabbaniyoon and they, kun fayakun, they ask and it will be given. This hadith al-Qudsi that Allah is describing these servants. If you close your ears for dunya Allah gives you hearing. Not his ears, Allah has no location. But he's giving an eternal attribute, I'm going to dress you eternally. So you're using your dunya to achieve your stations for akhirah, not hoping that you know you can just barely make it through dunya and maybe you'll have uh, no punishment in akhirah. But they're asking to use their dunya to achieve these great realities of akhirah in which Allah will grant them that you came and turned off your hearing of dunya and I granted you my Divinely hearing. What type of hearing is that in which they can hear these uloom and these realities? You turned off the eyes of your dunya and you stopped being fascinated with your physical eyes, you lost the flavour of that and you began to close your eyes to the physical world. And then the eye of your heart begins to open in which Allah's kingdom is then shown to the servant. That that which you should love is that which is eternal, not something that's going to be collapsing. We pray that Allah inspire within our hearts the immensities of this way of tafakkur and the immense bounty in which Allah wants to bestow upon His servants. And this way of ishq and this way of love and all these only Allah that all their teaching drawing us to this way of muhabbat and ishq. And the only way to achieve this are with acts of love. This is not a way for the brain that somebody can sit in there and say, okay I'm going to put into my brain that I'm going to be following this. No, it's only by way of your love that the actions that you do are signs of love and when the servant wants to act upon their reality they begin to enter into this love. These associations of dhikrullah and salli ala nabi these are the signs of love. These are like birds of paradise that gather to praise upon Allah to praise upon Allah's most beloved creation Sayyidina Muhammad we pray that Allah keep us amongst those whom He has favoured 
and those whom He dresses with immense bounty and blessings inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.